is early morning, and almost as far as the eye can see, Windermere extends in placid beauty. Halfway along the lake, where the Burness ferryboat disembarks, a small car, an Austin 8, has been warming up by the water's edge. And now it starts on an unusual journey, no less than a complete round of all the Lake District passes in an attempt to climb 25,000 feet in the course of one day. Is such a thing possible for so small a car? We shall see. Away up Kentmere to the little church at the head of the Vale. Behind the church is Garbon Road, leading to Troutbeck over a pass 1,450 feet high. It's called a road, but is actually a rough, precipitous track. The first real test comes on the grass-covered hairpin bends with a gradient of one in three and a half. But there's no flinching. After the grass is left, the surface is of the roughest and a severe enough test for the best of springs. There are gullies to cross and rocks to avoid. Severe as it is, Garbon Road is soon surmounted. Much more like a road is the famous Kirkstone Pass, from which it is a quick descent past Brothers Water to the village of Platterdale beneath the mass of Helvellyn, and then stretching away to the northeast and considered by some to be the loveliest of the English lakes is Ull's Water. After Alswater, there is more climbing across wide moorlands en route northward for Keswick, past many peat fields. Already 40 miles have been covered and 4,000 feet have been climbed. To the north of the Lake District lies Derwent Water, a lake studded with islands beyond the wooded valley of Borrowdale, both of unsurpassed beauty. From Derwent Water, a narrow road rising over Ashness Bridge provides the next ascent. Gaining height with every yard, the tarn at Watendlath is quickly approached. As the car passes by the farm at Watendlath, they're busily shearing sheep. The car's next ordeal is to be by water, and picking its way carefully across the water splash, it makes for the hill above the tarn. This is surely the steepest climb of all. In places it must be fully one in three. Deep gullies rock the car from side to side, but it cannot be spared, for only full throttle in the lowest gear will get it through. And thus another 800 feet can be added to the altitude climb. Over the ancient bridge at Grange, and running close by the river through the woods, is the little used track to Righead Quarries, situated high up on the west side of Borrowdale. From leafy shadows, the track emerges, and soon stiffens to a most strenuous climb on a surface both loose and rough, on which quick and certain gear operation is a vital requirement.
Once up the step by Castle Crag, with magnificent views of Derwent Water with the Skidder Range beyond, the track winds along as a narrow ledge high up on the fell side, with almost a sheer drop on the outer edge. The valley is now spread like a map below, with the village of Rothwaite in a setting of green fields. Then comes the next test. Striking straight up into a cleft in the fells, the climb is long, steep and rough. And it's first speed all the way until by sheer endurance, the summit is reached. Few motorists venture up to Watton Lath and fewer still to Righead Quarry. But now the new road is made, Honister Pass is frequently crossed. After rising 1,000 feet from Borrowdale, the road literally plunges down as if to escape the ominous shadow of Honister Crag and reach the more serene beauties of Buttermere. Even in this pleasant scene, so typical of Lakeland, there is no rest for the breaker of altitude records, and so Newland's Hawes is next to Monty. Then on to Whinlatter Pass before doubling back, by which time over 11,400 vertical feet will have been piled up in just over 100 miles and six hours running time. Next, south to Grasmere, where Wordsworth lived, and over Red Bank into Langdale, for the biggest half of this formidable day's journey still lies ahead. Langdale pikes stand like sentinels over the head of the valley as the Austin continues on its course. Out of Langdale there is no apparent escape. No possible way over the fells can be seen until one suddenly comes upon the strenuous climb over to Blee Tarn. Power in plenty, precise steering, and a rapid gear change is necessary to negotiate this wheeling, winding ascent. But once over the crest, it is an easy run down to the lonely beauty and calm waters of Blee Tarn. For a few minutes pause in a perfect scene. struck a road through the very heart of the Lake District to reach the sea. Out of Little Langdale it climbs over 1,000 feet to Rhinos, a wild and bleak pass calling for resolute driving and a sturdy car with plenty of cooling reserve. And at the top of this pass is the Three Shire Stone, where meet the boundaries of Lancashire, Westmoreland and Cumberland. Winding from side to side down the sloping fell, the road plunges from Rhino's summit into the desolation of Rhino's bottom, a descent that proves a drastic test for the brakes. The car takes in its stride the numerous water splashes formed where mountain streams, little heeding motor traffic, tumble across the road. And so the bridge at Cockleybeck Farm is quickly reached. Next, hard knot. For cornering and gradient combined, the most sensational hill of all. 
The car is swung round 15 hairpin bends in less than half a mile, winding the steering wheel this way and that, using every ounce of power the engine can give. The back wheels spin, grip and spin again, but without a stop, the pass is breasted. Rising from the verdant beauty of Eskdale, framed by the sea beyond, the return over Hard Knot is more exciting still. With a series of hairpins, the road loops up onto the flank of the mountainside, a white ribbon rising towards the skyline, winding onward for the last ridge of the pass. The ostinate, cool and undeterred, climbing steadily and well, reaches the last series of hairpin bends. One hectic thrust upward, it surmounts the ridge, makes the cairn at the top and is over. So that was hard not. Chalk up another thousand feet. From the Dudden Valley, which carries the stream from Rhino's Bottom, no fewer than four climbs are made. To Devoke, to Bootlefell, to Stainton Ground, and by far the most strenuous, Walna Scar. Rocky track winding up the fell side, this climb would surely search out any chassis weakness, any lack of power or endurance. But nothing seems to stop the little car. The steepest gradients, the roughest surfaces alike, it still goes gamely on. Thank you. It has already climbed over 20,000 feet in under 200 miles, and there are two hours of climbing still ahead. bathing in Coniston as its pleasant shores are skirted. Then comes the climb out of the valley to that perfect Lakeland miniature, hidden among the Coniston fells, Tarn House. Back once more to Kirkston to climb the famous pass by the narrow, winding and little used road that rises out of Ambleside. This is the stiffest route on Kirkston and is aptly styled the Struggle. When the weather is dry, it is a dusty climb and hot. But from the top, Windermere stretches out in grand perspective. With Kirkston behind, there only remains the return climb over Garborn Road. Through evening shadows, the Austin 8 strikes up a steep, rugged track between stone walls. As fresh and lively as ever, with wheels spinning and stones flying, it rears up round the steep corner and the first section is done. But there's even worse ahead. The so-called road becomes a bed of loose stones among an outcrop of rocks. Lurching, plunging, leaping, rolling from side to side, almost throwing itself upward, the car practically loses all momentum before this last ordeal is over. And so, with 234 miles behind it and 25,065 feet climbed, a willing and gallant little car can call it a day. Indeed, a day of days. Well done. <laughs>